first time I ever remember seeing you was in um, the Miracle at Saint Anne, right? That okay. Saint. And it's it's funny because the next time I saw you again was was Ballers. Yeah. And you play the because it's rare. In Hollywood, where a big, strong black dude gets to pay a compassionate human being. <laughs> it's usually did something. Let's, let's usually, take the Hollywood part out. Usually yeah. in the news as well, we right. end up in the wrong side of right. everything. Yes. Right. So I, I, it's real. I've been getting blessed, man. They put some meat on the bone for me in general right. with these roles. And I, and I, and I, I bring that up because in, in um, Miracle of St. Anna, you were the compassionate soldier who was looking after the kid. And yep. then... Uh, the ballers, you have that level of compassion, and it's and, I, and not even trying to be facetious. It is rare where they find a, a big, strong black dude who's not the bully or tearing stuff up or yeah. dumb or mm-hmm. you know just all these kind of stereotypical roles. So you're actually playing roles that you don't see inhabited by men who 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 uh, who look like you. Often. Well, and this is the issue. To be honest, is I try to stay away from the stereotypes as much as I could. And I did uh, I did three seasons of CSI Miami. Right. And I remember being on the show. I had never seen the show prior to getting on the show. And then when I got on the show, not just because it's a network TV check, but I got on the show and I said, you know what? I would do this show for 50 years because of what it represents to society. Mm-hmm. Because I was playing a black scientist law enforcement character that was not corrupt. Right. That was, that was actually so, a, you know, a unicorn. For the, yeah, <laughs> really I was unicorn. a unicorn at that point. Yeah. No wonder. Yeah. And so, and, but, but it's real, man. I mean, I take that seriously. I choose these roles. And, you know, I could be farther down the road in my career if I was willing to shuck and jive and tap dance a little bit. Right. But it's just not for me. But that literally, if you're not a, a brute or a bully, then you 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 tap dance and shuck and jive like I, I mean it's an either or yeah, yeah. it's kind of but you you don't except for me right <laughs> literally no thank literally. god but except it's good to hear me. it's so good to hear because it, it's it's not it's I think it's a rare occurrence that it happens it and is. I think because of the narrative that is out there about black men in general that black men are not compassionate that black men do not love their family that black men cannot be uh, both sensitive and smart and you know protective at the same time so it's good that at least you're you're yeah. keeping that in mind and you're trying to do it man trying to layer it we, we're dynamic people. Yeah. Right. We're beautiful people, right. and we all know that because we all grew up in black families. Right. Yeah. Well, you Big grew up honey. in Orange County, but <laughs> <And> so, <laughs> I, did, I said in black families, oh, yeah. <laughs> and we were Orange County black population. <laughs> do you think? What do you think that this this air you have of of, of approachability? Because I think a lot of times one of our one of the things that I've always noticed about younger men is if you grew up in a certain environment, then not smiling and looking like you're, you're, you're menacing works for you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's a protective uh, kind of element. And then when you get in society at large, the same thing, thing that protects you is a drawback. Like if you ever see somebody really famous and black, the thing they talk about them f- most about is their smile yep. and how approachable they were. Yep. And, and you, you have that, like that's something that you have to, because I, I guarantee you that moving out from the shotguns to Orange County, and taking the onus of having to be a certain way and just no doubt. had some kind of effect. Right? Well, there's no doubt about it. And also, when we moved out there, we were the, the sore thumb. We were the yeah, ones sticking only, out. Yeah. And we were the ones getting pulled over more often. And right. we were the ones, you know what I mean? And for me, growing up, I'm the youngest of seven kids. So I got a lot of that just juggling personalities of my older siblings. Right. And then I also got a lot of it from being a very big person. Right. I'm not somebody... You know, I learned early on that if I get in fights and this and the other, the consequences can be dire. Right. Like, there's real situations that can happen. Right. I break stuff. I used to break stuff all the time when I was a kid. My brothers talk about it all the time, how I used to break their stuff all the right. time by accident, not right. knowing. So for me, I always am cognizant of another individual feeling comfortable because of my size. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Especially yeah. in Hollywood. Yeah. Because yeah. most of the leading men are, are your size. Yeah. So yeah. it's yeah. like, so it's, you know, they want the hero this dude this five 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 six to come be the man, be right. the protector, be this, that, and the other. So you have to find ways to allow that to happen right. yeah. while not sacrificing your masculinity. That's, that's right. Right. <laughs>